Navajo land, Arizona's vast tract of sawgrass, cactus and sagebrush. The last refuge of the first American Indians and until the beginning of the 19th century, the stronghold of the Navajos, aristocrats of the Indian tribes. Rating themselves far above the peaceful communities who were content to breed cattle and weave their famous blankets, the Navajos took what they wanted and prospered for a time, but that was more than a century ago. Today, the Navajos are mere tenants of the land they once owned. They roam the same plains, but their wanderings are limited by the state. In some respects, they haven't changed. They still live in little huts called hogans, eight-sided thatch-roof dwellings with a bizarre scheme of decoration inside that's so typical of the race. On primitive looms, they still weave the ancient tribal symbols into fabrics which they trade with the white man for sugar, coffee and beans. Their social standing is shown by the number of ornaments they wear, especially the turquoise rings which the Spaniards taught them to make centuries ago. There are several technical schools and the women and girls learn crafts that they can follow profitably when they finish their training, even after they're married. And they have a natural aptitude for embroidery. The men too are taught practical trades that make them useful members of the community. The elementary schools are plain brick buildings to which the children with their parents travel long distances. But the problem of the Indian's education isn't so plain. The Navajo has no written language, so the three R's come into their own again. Reading opens up wonderful new worlds for the children, and writing too. But these funny things they call letters want some drawing. While the parents wait, they do odd jobs for themselves. Father can have a little bit off the top, to sharpen his axe, or mend his boots, probably his only pair. Modern hospitals bring the benefits of skilled nursing and antiseptics to the babies. Oh, yes, so tired. Yesterday, they had been born with nothing but the doubtful blessing of the medicine man. And Navajo girls are trained as maternity nurses. But the great problem of Navajo land is Navajo land itself. For years, overgrazing has left much of the reservation barren and useless. The livestock must be cut down until the pasturage is plentiful again. As it is, there's hardly enough grass for some of the flocks to keep wool and mutton together. Horses too must be reduced if the range is to come back. It'll be hard for the Navajo to part with his horses. Though they're underfed and scrawny, they are still a worthless sign of his wealth. Today, under state supervision, the Navajos are learning to reclaim the land and laborers are going to it constructing reservoirs in an irrigation scheme that will make again the country suitable for farming. Experimental areas have been marked out for land development schemes and great progress has been made in bringing back the soil to its old fertility. What was once bare and arid is now lush grazing land and the Navajo sheep are fattening. The last refuge is now the first and only refuge for a new generation of enlightened Indians who will honor their heritage. Navajo land has been reborn. <laughs>